Nearly 50 years after the first human set foot on the moon, maybe it's time for a new challenge in space. How about finding out in our lifetimes if there's life on planets or seeing more outside the galaxy of our own solar system? That's the goal of a project called Breakthrough Starshot, the brainchild of a Russian billionaire, a former director of NASA's Ames Research Center, and a group of high-level physicists and engineers. They hope to send hundreds of tiny spacecraft to the Alpha Centauri star system, where they'll examine planets for signs of life. It's a monumental engineering challenge that will require huge leaps in technology for spacecraft design, propulsion, and communication. The attempt by SpaceX and Tesla chief executive Elon Musk to get humans to Mars looks like a neighborhood stroll by comparison. But if Breakthrough Starshot succeeds, we could get snapshots of the Alpha Centauri system four light years away, roughly the same as 6,800 trips to Pluto in about 30 to 40 years time from now. And maybe we'll get a better idea of just how cool or rare or any form of, I guess it's fine. I'm going to, okay. (sighs) <sighs> I'd really love to interject my personal opinion here, but uh, for the sake of it, I'm not. Um, so, um, let me see. Starshot isn't the kind of space mission that you're used to. It won't use a mammoth rocket to propel a heavy spacecraft. NASA's New Horizons interplanetary probe weighed a bit more than half ton, for example. Instead, Breakthrough Starshot plans to use a giant Earth-based laser array to shoot a fleet of nearly weightless spacecraft traveling much, much faster. The spacecraft should, could be just 3 to 12 feet across and weigh as little as a thimble full of water. Now, how much faster will they travel? Well, a Starshot spacecraft could move at a fifth the speed of light, 134 million miles per hour, to get to the three stars of the Alpha Centauri system in just over 20 years. Once there, it was right through, snapping photos fiercely, and then sending us the data from the far side of the trip. In comparison, New Horizons took nine and a half years to reach Pluto. Now, you could argue the Starshot idea came from famous 16th century astronomer Johannes Kepler, who wrote in a letter to fellow brainiac Galileo Galilei, with ships or sails built for heavenly breezes, some will venture into that great vastness. So, um... I'm going to sum up a little bit about the article. Apparently, they're saying that if you can get a light enough spacecraft, we're not going to have to have humans on it. We're not going to have to have all this machinery. We can actually take all the technology and shrink it down into these chips, you know, 3 to 12 feet across, weigh virtually nothing, and then put them on this parasail-type thing. Um, And instead of it being harnessed by light sources coming from, like, the sun or stars, or wherever it happens to be, it'll get a solid singular beam of light, and it'll confined in a laser array um, from Earth to blast it out there at about 60,000 times the speed. In about mere moments, it'll be past the orbit of the moon, shooting across faster than any um, spacecraft that we've ever sent across um, <laughs> the solar system before. Quite an impressive number. Um and seeing as how they they actually have some pictures that go along with it, which is a star shot nanocraft like this tiny Earth orbiting satellite on a chip called Kicksat will have to carry sensors, a computer, and a laser, all with about the same mass as a paperclip. This is kind of this is this is like sci-fi technology where you sit there and you go, "What the heck? Do you think they could actually do it?" Well, yeah, they actually think it's quite possible that you could do it. Um, Detailed destinations plans will evolve as an actual launch date nears. The Starshot plan initially called for a tiny package of electronics attached to a flat light sail, perhaps one to four meters across. Researchers are now favoring a new idea, the comparably sized spherical light sail studded with electronics. Think of it as a large ping pong ball with computers and cameras pointing in different directions. The big advantage, the spherical shape, coupled with a hollow laser beam that's stronger toward its outside edge, could be naturally centered on the beam throughout the acceleration, which will essentially just blast it off in this big, huge, concentrated laser beam. Um, and you'll hit what is something like 6, 000, uh, 60,000 G-force. Um, keep in mind that the Earth pulls you to the ground with a force of 1 G. That's the same as a bullet shot from a gun, but protracted for minutes instead of a split second. Afterward, the nanocraft would be six times the distance from the Earth to the moon and traveling far faster than anything else humans have ever built. If you could fly a plane at that clip, you'd circle the Earth equator in two-thirds of a second. So, obviously, they're still testing it out. They're trying to figure out ways or you have to keep it perfectly aligned and centered on the beam. Um, so, 
even fortunately lasers are becoming more economical laser power is doubling every 20 months and the cost is having every 34 months even so you can expect a laser array to cost something around 10 billion dollars but it'll be a complex array um and then building light cell material that will vanish off into a puff of ash when hit by that big old laser beam. So it's quite impressive. So if you guys want to read more, um, the title for it is Are We Alone? Tiny Spacecraft Will Head to Alpha Century to Find Out. And this is an article by CNET.